Before learning the conversations from this short story, we need to know about profiles of characters of this story. Number 1. Laura Smith. Detective Smith is a policewoman who works in London. After her previous experiences with Natalie and Alice, she now specializes in cases related to the world of art. Number 2. Peter Thompson. Peter is a detective and colleague of Detective Smith. He has had less time on the job and, therefore, Detective Smith is his guide and mentor. He listens attentively to what she says and follows her instructions to the letter, although he is not afraid to give his opinion when he thinks necessary. Number 3. Natalie. A young art historian and curator who works at the Tate Museum. Number 4. Emily Brown. The director of the Tate Museum. Number 5. Chief Inspector Turner. Chief Inspector at the police station where Detective Smith works. He controls the work of everyone in the division. Number 6. James. A scholar at the Tate Museum, under the supervision of Natalie. He is an art history student. Everyone in his family is on the police force but he wants to dedicate his life to painting. Next chapter. I'll talk about introduction to the story. See you next chapter. Introduction to the story. Shortly after arresting a major art forger, Detective Laura Smith receives a call from the director of the Tate Museum in London. Has another work of art gone missing? Actually, the opposite. A mysterious painting has appeared on the Tate walls. No one knows where it came from or how it got there. Detective Smith goes to the museum with her partner Peter Thompson. They meet the director, Emily, and the curator, Natalie. Could this be a mistake? A joke? In fact, it's neither. They discover some tiny writing on the back of the painting. This painting is not here by accident. While they try to figure out where the painting came from, they further discover that it is filled with clues. The painting contains five scenes, each representing a crime that will be committed somewhere in London by the end of the day. As they race around the city to stop this crime wave, more questions arise. Who is behind this network of organized crime? And who is trying to warn Detective Smith? This is end of the introduction to the story. See you next chapter. That is chapter 1. The Call. Chapter 1. The Call. Detective Smith wakes up to the sound of her telephone ringing. She looks at the clock and sees that it is 8 o'clock in the morning. She hears her son, Jake, answering the call. After a few minutes, she summons up the energy to get out of bed and go to the kitchen. Good morning, Mummy. Good morning, son. How are you today? Very well. How are you, Mummy? Very tired. I've been working a lot this week. I hope the next few days will be quieter. Me too. I'm exhausted. Really? Why is that, son? They have me working very hard at school. The teacher is making us paint, paint, and paint, and she wants us to use lots of colors. Then it's story time. Then we have to sing a song, and then play ball. I see. And then at home, your mother stays asleep and you have to answer the phone. Who was it, by the way? Your boss. He said it was agent. Agent? No, it wasn't agent. He said it was indigent. What do you mean, Jake? Wait, did he say it was urgent? Yes, he said it was urgent. Chapter 2. The Urgency Detective Smith grabs her mobile and calls her boss, Inspector Turner. He is a man with a bad temper who can be quite brusque, but they have always got along. While Laura is talking, she prepares a hot chocolate for Jake, which he drinks in silence while watching cartoons. Hello? Hi, Detective Turner. 
It's me, Detective Smith. You called a while ago? Yes, I told your son it was urgent. Where were you? Sorry, after last week's case I was really tired. I was in bed. Good. I hope you slept enough because we have something new that requires you to come down to the station immediately. Oh no. What's it about? Another forgery? I can't give you any more details over the phone. Detective Smith, you must come in. Take Jake to school and come immediately. Okay. I'll be there in half an hour. Perfect. We will wait for you. See you then. See you then. Mommy, what does urgent mean? Chapter 3. Something Unexpected After leaving Jake at school, Laura drives to the police station, where she works, as quickly as possible. On arriving, she sees that Detective Inspector Turner is waiting for her at the door and he looks worried. Detective Turner, what's happened? What is so urgent? I can't tell you here. Let's go into the office and I'll show you. What a mystery. It must be a very sensitive case. Is Peter inside? Yes, everyone's inside. It's a very serious matter. And needs your immediate attention. Surprise! surprise! Wow, what's all this? A surprise party for me? Happy birthday, Detective Smith. But my birthday is on the 12th of September. Today is the 12th of September, Smith. You're already 40 years old. Oh goodness, you're right. Thanks, partner. I'm beginning to think that you need a holiday. Everyone, let's make a toast for our best detective who, in case no one noticed, yesterday caught Jeremy Bates the biggest forger of Picasso in all of Europe. Cheers. 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 Thank you, everyone. It's an honor to work with this team. Hold on, is that cheesecake? Can I have some? Chapter 4. The Second Call While they are celebrating Laura's birthday at the police station, the phone rings in her office. Swallowing the last mouthful of her slice of cheesecake quickly, Detective Smith answers the phone. Hello, who is speaking? Detective Smith, it's Emily Brown the director of the Tate Museum. Congratulations. Good morning, Emily. Did you also find out it was my birthday? It seems I was the last person to know. I didn't realize it was your birthday. Happy birthday. I was congratulating you on catching Jeremy Bates. At last, we've stopped that wrongdoer. I don't know what makes me angrier. That his paintings were so good that they tricked our best specialists or that someone that talented decided to dedicate himself to forgeries rather than develop his own artistic career. I know. It's really a shame. What are you going to do with his paintings? Well, as they are not original Picassos, we can consider them historical pieces. Especially as the artist has been captured. We are planning a special exhibition dedicated to forgeries. I think that's a great idea. Ever since we worked together on the robbery of the William Turner drawings, I've become more and more interested in cases related to the world of art. I know. That's exactly why I called you. Oh no. Has there been a robbery at the museum? Actually no. The opposite. It would be better if you came. Chapter 5. The Appearance After making excuses to her boss and colleagues for not staying to eat and drink for a while longer, Laura heads to the Tate Museum. When she arrives, she meets Emily and her friend Natalie, who she worked with previously to catch an art thief. Emily and Natalie are looking worriedly at a large painting in one of the most important rooms in the contemporary art wing of the museum. Laura, how are you? Hi Natalie, fine. How are you? And Alice? Alice can hardly move. She's due to give birth in a few weeks and the baby is very restless. But apart from that, everything is fine. That's great. And how are you, Emily? Your phone call made me very curious. Are you going to tell me what has happened? 
Perhaps this painting has been forged? Or was it stolen? To be quite honest, we are not sure what is wrong with this painting. Chapter 6. The Missing File Detective Smith cannot work out why Emily and Natalie have called her. There seems to be a problem with the painting in front of them, but, so far, they haven't been able to tell her what. I think it's best if we tell you how we realized something was up. Okay. Over the last few weeks, lots of new paintings have arrived at the museum. I'm sure you've noticed that the works come with a small sign, a data sheet, which explains who the artist is, when the work was painted, and so on. Yes, of course. Well, today all of the files arrived for the new paintings. However, when we had finished putting them out, we noticed that this painting didn't have a file. We thought there was a mistake, but that's not the case. The file wasn't printed as this painting isn't part of our collection. What do you mean? This isn't our painting. We didn't buy it. Nobody donated it. It simply turned up here. Chapter 7. The Painting For the first time since her arrival, Laura stops to look at the work. It's a big painting, at least 2 meters wide and 1 meter tall with a thick metallic frame. There are various scenes with lots of people in the painting. It makes her think about the Where's Wally? books that Jake really loves. I understand. It's very mysterious. Suddenly there is a painting hanging here. I'm sure it's a mistake, but I understand your concern. We will need to go over the security cameras and speak with the employees of the museum. Of course, we haven't done that yet. We thought we would call you before doing anything because... Well, we were worried there could be something in the frame or behind the canvas. A strange device. You mean to say there could be a bomb in the picture? Chapter 8. The Bomb Emily has just told Detective Smith that they suspect there might be explosives in the picture that mysteriously appeared in the museum. Laura makes a telephone call. Who did you call? My colleague, Peter. He's on his way with our bomb detector. But before that, why do you think there could be a bomb in the picture? Well, of course, it's just an idea, but it occurred to us that many important people visit the museum. Politicians from around the world, members of the royal family, business people. It's the perfect way to bring in an explosive without setting off the security controls. Well thought. It's, of course, a possibility. Is there an important event coming up? Yes, of course. We have all sorts of events this month and lots of important personalities from around the world will be coming. Okay. Later, if possible, I'd like a detailed list. But look, here comes our bomb detector. How handsome he is. Chapter 9. The Bomb Detector Peter, Laura's colleague, approaches along the corridor. An enormous police dog is on a lead. Natalie, who loves dogs, approaches it and starts stroking it. How handsome you are, puppy. What's his name? Officially, he's called K9-1977. But we call him, X-Ray. Why X-Ray? Because he can see through things. Nothing gets past X-Ray. He's the best. You are so lovely, X-Ray. I'd love to take you home. Unfortunately, he is needed at the central office, but you can visit him whenever you like. Okay, okay, enough pampering. This is the painting I was talking about, Peter. Bring X-Ray over here and see if he can detect anything. Chapter 10. Safe. After X-Ray, the bomb detector dog, gets closer to the painting and doesn't have any reaction, Detective Smith and Peter assure Emily and Natalie that there are no explosives hidden behind the painting or in the frame. We are safe. If X-Ray doesn't smell anything, it's because there isn't anything to worry about. Well, nothing that can explode, at least. There could still be a letter, a message, 
or a clue from the person who brought the painting to the museum. Unless it was a simple mistake. I hope so. Now, if there's no problem, I would like to take the painting down and see if there is anything in the frame or behind the painting. Is that possible? Of course. I'll call my assistant. Chapter 11. James, the Assistant. After Natalie calls James, her assistant, he joins them. He is a young man of about 25 years old, very smiley and happy. He is tall and has black curly hair. Natalie introduces James to Detective Smith and Peter. A pleasure to meet you, James. The pleasure's all mine. So, you're coppers? Yes, but don't be alarmed. We're just investigating. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm more than used to the police. How come? Well, because nearly everyone in my family is in the police force. My dad, my uncles, my older sisters. I'm the black sheep. Can you imagine my dad's reaction when I told him I wanted to study art? I can imagine. I come from a family of artists. Chapter 12. The Frame. Natalie notices that Detective Smith is getting impatient and, therefore, interrupts the two boys, who are chatting about their families, so that they can go back to concentrating on the task in front of them. James, could you help me lower this painting and turn it around so that the detectives can study it closer? Of course. Sorry. Let's see. It looks like there isn't anything behind the canvas. The back of the frame is hollow. We can do tests, but I don't see any suspicious object or substance. I'm starting to think that this picture is here by mistake. This picture is not here by mistake. What do you mean? How do you know? It says there. Look, in this corner. Something is written. This picture is not here by mistake. Chapter 13 this picture is not here by mistake. Everyone gets closer to have a look at the writing that Natalie pointed out, except James, who stays apart stroking the dog Tenth Ray. The text is small and written in red paint. Do you think this is a joke? That someone is laughing at the security of this museum? It could be a conceptual piece of art. A frustrated artist who wants to prove there is an exclusive group of artists. I don't think it's something that convoluted. Although it isn't as simple as we think either. What's certain is that the person who brought this picture to the museum is trying to tell us something. Well, we have to go over the security recordings to see if we can find out who it was. That's not necessary. I know who brought the picture to the museum. Who was it? Me, of course. Chapter 14. The Explanation. Everyone looks open-mouthed at James until Natalie works out what the boy wanted to say. Of course, James brings all of the pictures. How does that work? It works this way. When there is a donation, a sale, or another type of acquisition. The museum is in charge of going to get the pieces from the airport or wherever they need to be collected from. James is the one who goes to get them. Is he the only person in charge of the pieces until they get here? No, of course not. We have a special lorry and a complete team of specialists, but James is in charge of coordinating their movements and keeping me informed. Exactly. This painting arrived approximately a week ago, and I went to get it myself. Chapter 15. The Mysterious Call. After listening to Natalie and James's explanation, Detective Smith and Peter continue to inquire about the origin of the mysterious painting that has appeared on the wall of the Tate Museum. Where did you go to collect the picture? It wasn't out of the ordinary. I received a call with the order to collect the picture from an art warehouse that I have been to before. Many important galleries in the city use it. When I got there, the head of the warehouse showed me where the picture was and we put it in the lorry. There wasn't anyone else at the warehouse? No, only the picture. 
Wait a moment, James. I'm the only person who tells you where to go and get the new works of art. But I didn't send you to get this painting. Why did you pay attention to that call? Well because it was you. I remember it perfectly. It was a rainy day. You had gone out to accompany Alice for her scan. After a couple of hours, I received the call. I didn't recognize the number but, when I answered, it was you. I thought maybe you were calling me from Alice's phone. You also told me exactly where to hang the picture. James. I didn't make any call on that day. Chapter 16. The Unknown Number. On discovering that the mysterious call to pick up the picture wasn't made by Natalie, they ask James to find, on his phone, the number that called him on that date. Natalie, do you remember which day it was? Of course, Alice had her scan on Friday the 6th of September. I remember perfectly as we had the doctor's appointment arranged for months and it was written on a note on the fridge. Okay, let's see. Yes, I received just one call on that day from this number. Peter, please can you take down the number? Take X-ray back to the central office, then go to the police station and check with the telephone company who that number belongs to. Natalie, does the number seem familiar? Not at all. It's not Alice's number and, anyway, I'm sure I didn't make any calls on that day. Don't worry. We will soon find out who called James pretending to be you. Chapter 17. The picture leaves the museum. Peter leaves the museum, taking the dog with him. Then Laura explains to them that she will need to take the picture with her to the police station. I'm not sure whether it's a crime to take a work of art to a museum. But impersonating another person definitely is. Therefore. We can open up an investigation. I will have to take the painting with me as evidence. You are taking the picture? Yes, of course. We're going to have to take it to the police station. I was actually thinking you could help me transport it with the team and Lori that you mentioned before. Of course, detective. It's a shame. Why do you say that? Well, because it's surrounded by mystery. This picture is becoming more and more interesting. Believe me, the most interesting part will be when we find out who is behind this prank. Chapter 18. The Police Station. Detective Smith and James take the picture to the police station and put it in Detective Smith's office. While they are there, Peter knocks on the door. He has some news about the telephone number that was used to call James. I have good news and bad news. The good first, then I'll deal with the problems. Okay, the good news is that I found out quite a lot about the phone number. It belongs to Vodafone, one of the sims they sell in the shops. I know they normally ask for a document or passport number to sell them, but the company told me that there is no record of sale for this sim, so it must have been stolen. I thought so. What about the call log? Could they identify any call from this number? Yes, they identified two calls. One of the calls was made to Jake, and the other. That's the bad news. To whom was the second call made? A protected number. Chapter 19. Protected Numbers. Peter has just told Detective Smith everything he was able to find out about the telephone number that was used to call James to ask him to take the mysterious painting to the museum. After calling James, the phone was used to call a protected number. What's a protected number? It could belong to a politician, a member of the royal family, someone in the military, an MI5 operative. Protected numbers are for people who are very important. That's why the telephone companies can't give us that information. We could get the information if we ask for authorization from someone higher up, but they would never give it to us for a case like this. They only normally give this information when there's a kidnapping, a terrorist attack. Something big. Okay. I didn't know that existed. Do the police have protected numbers? 
Phillips. Yes, of course, in the higher ranks like Detective Inspector Turner. Chapter 20. Father and Son. Detective Inspector Turner approaches Laura, Peter, and James with a worried expression. What's this? What's happened here? What are you talking about, sir? James, are you okay? Has something bad happened? Do you know each other? Know him? He's my son. Of course. Don't you remember? I told you my dad was a policeman. There's no problem, dad. I'm here because of this picture. What's this picture? Did you paint it? Ha 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 ha. That would be the easy explanation. No. This picture appeared at the Tate Museum. Who would have thought? I studied art in order to not get involved in crimes and mysteries, and here I am at my father's police station, involved in an investigation. Chapter 21. The Warehouse. Detective Smith and Peter head to the warehouse that the picture had been collected from. It's a big shed with lots of small spaces in the storage facility. The owner of the warehouse, Mr. Bennett, meets them at the door. Mr. Bennett? Good day. I'm Detective Smith and this is Detective Thompson. Good day, detectives. As we said on the phone earlier, we have a few questions to ask you about a picture someone kept in this storage area, and which then was taken by an employee of the Tate Museum. Yes, of course, I remember. I have found the papers and the person in question only left a name and a surname. Let's see. He was called Thomas Brown. Thomas Brown? Is that all? Well, yes. There wasn't a document number? Contact details? An address? A telephone number? Not that I can see. Generally, we don't ask too much information when they pay in advance. Also, the boy told me that the people from the Tate would come by the next day and that's what happened. We're used to working with the museum without any hitches. I see. Do you remember what the boy looked like? Of course. I remember very clearly. Chapter 22. Average. Detective Smith and Peter are asking the owner of the warehouse, Mr. Bennett, some questions about where the mysterious painting was found before being taken to the Tate Museum. Could you describe the young man in as much detail as possible? Of course, I remember well. He had on a red cap with a black visor, and it looked brand new. He wore dark glasses with a black frame. He wore a gray sweatshirt and jeans. Mr. Bennett. Do you remember anything else other than his clothes? The color of his hair or eyes? His age? Oh, I see. Well, he was a normal boy. I didn't see his hair as it was under his cap, nor his eyes, as he was wearing glasses. Regarding his age, I would say, between 20 and 35 years old? I'm not sure. Could you tell us how tall he was? He was average. Not too tall, not too short. Average. Chapter 23. Fresh Paint. Mr. Bennett gives Laura and Peter the key to the warehouse where the painting had been kept prior to being transported to the museum. The small room is a cube about three meters squared with a metal door, and it's completely empty. Great. Now all we have to do is find every man in London with an average look, between 20 and 35 years old, called Thomas Brown. I'm pretty sure that Thomas Brown isn't the real name of the person who brought the painting to the warehouse. I'm joking, Smith. Of course, it's a fake name. And even if it were his real name, it wouldn't help us. Well, it looks like this storage room is empty. It isn't empty. Look. What is it? Blood? No, it's red paint, like the writing in the picture. Do you know what this means? Does it mean I can't tell the difference between blood and paint? No, it means that this paint was fresh when they brought the painting here. Chapter 24. Adam Calls. 
Detective Smith is back in her office. She is in her chair, looking at the picture which is leaning against the wall. Suddenly, the phone rings. Hello? Good day Detective Smith. My name is Adam. Do we know each other? We haven't met yet, but I have a feeling we'll know each other soon. We have friends in common. Who? Natalie and Alice. Oh, they've never mentioned you. The truth is Laura, that Natalie and Alice are part of the same secret society as I am. We know that we can trust you, so that's why I'm telling you. What kind of secret society? We are a network of investigators, historians, and archaeologists who, on a global scale, work to protect the art world by fighting against smuggling, robberies, forgeries. We were certainly impressed with your work exposing Jeremy Bates. Thank you. Could you tell me why you are calling? I'm calling about the painting you have in front of you right now. Chapter 25. What Adam Knows. Detective Smith is speaking on the telephone with Adam, a mysterious friend of Natalie and Alice, who says they are part of a secret society. How do you know about the painting? Natalie told me everything. Don't worry, I'm contacting you to offer my help. Does this secret society have something to do with the picture? No, that's what worries me. Normally, we find out about mysterious cases related to the art world way before the police. But on this occasion, it seems as if this picture has come out of nowhere. Natalie sent me a photo, and we couldn't identify the artist. It's someone who has great technique, but not anyone well known. No offense, Adam, but you aren't helping me much. Ha ha ha, that's true. However, there is something we managed to find out. What did you manage to find out? The people and the places that are in the painting are real. And I think that the person who painted it is trying to warn us of something. Chapter 26. Five Scenes. After finishing her call with Adam, Detective Smith calls Peter to her office. While she is waiting for him, she stops to look closely at the hundreds of details and characters that are displayed all over the painting. What's happening? Any news? Peter, how many years did you work patrolling the streets of London? Almost five years, but I really prefer working in the office. Okay, have a coffee and refresh your memory. Right now, we could really use those five years of experience. What do you mean? Do you see the painting? Do you see that there are five different scenes taking place in five different places? Yes, sure, and there are lots of people in each scene. However, if you look at the details, you can see what's happening. Look at this, do you see what this person has in his hand? A weapon? Exactly, Peter. Tell me if I'm wrong but I think this picture is showing us five crimes. In five places in London. Chapter 27. Analyzing the painting. Laura, along with Peter, analyzes the painting in her office. She uses a magnifying glass to see better. What are we looking for exactly? We need to find details that indicate the place, date, and time. If I'm not wrong. This painting represents five crimes that could happen in any place in London. Okay, okay. Here is something I recognize. I would recognize this sculpture anywhere, with the horse and the bloke on top. Also, the floor below has a very peculiar color. It can only be one place. Where is it? It's Trafalgar Square in London or I'll eat my arm. Chapter 28. Trafalgar Square. Peter has just identified where one of the scenes in the picture is set. It's at Trafalgar Square in London. Now, Peter and Detective Smith need to find out whether there is a crime shown in the picture. Okay, excellent work. Do you see anything suspicious in the scene? 
There are too many people. In any case, the square is often busy because it's popular with tourists. Let me see. It's not suspicious, but there is a newspaper in a pocket, and I think it says the 12th of September. The date of my birthday. That's today. We should be able to see the time on the clock tower. Give me the magnifying glass. Do you see anything? Yes, it's very small but clear. The clock tower says 2.30 in the afternoon. Okay, now all we have to do is find a crime. Chapter 29. Where will the three men in ski masks come in? Laura and Peter have identified the place, date, and time of one of the scenes shown in the mysterious picture that showed up at the Tate Museum. They think that someone could be warning them about a crime that will happen in the city. Almost everyone is dressed as though it's warm. Don't you agree? Yes, it seems that way. Why? Well, because I don't see any weapons, but these three blokes have ski masks. Suspicious, no? Very suspicious. It looks like they are in this shop. What is it? It looks like there are books in the shop. No, but who would rob a bookshop? It's not a bookshop. I know what it is. Chapter 30. Convincing Turner. Detective Smith and Peter run to speak with Inspector Turner to tell him what they have discovered. They find him in his office, having lunch. Inspector, we need to talk to you urgently. What's happened? We think there will be a robbery today at 2.30 in Trafalgar Square. A robbery? Who will be robbed? We think they will try to steal from Knight & Sons, the most important collector's shop in the city. Collector? Stamps, old coins, etc. And how do you know this? Do you have an informant? No, it's on the picked. Of course we have an informant. An anonymous one. Who is it? We don't know. We still don't know. He called us. Please inspector. We have to send a patrol car. It's in less than an hour. It doesn't sound very reliable. Please, sir. It's my birthday. Chapter 31. Trafalgar Square. At the pleas of Detective Smith, Inspector Turner gives his permission to head to Trafalgar Square with reinforcements. Laura, along with Peter, drives there at top speed. Four police cars from the reinforcement unit are waiting for them in the square. There are so many people in the square today. Look, this is Knight and Sons. It's a lovely old shop, don't you think? Yes, it looks as though it has items of value inside. Can you see the reinforcements anywhere? Yes, I think they're over there. Detective Smith? I'm Sergeant Brown. This is my team. They told me at the station that there could be a robbery in the square. Exactly, Sergeant. More precisely, it'll be at the Antiquities Shop Knight and Sons at 2.30 this afternoon. Perfect. What's the plan? As you're all in uniform, I think it'll be better if you all stay nearby ready to come into action when I call. Detective Thompson and I will watch from near the entrance. Understood. All clear, team? Yes, sir. Chapter 32. The Attempted Robbery Laura and Peter lose themselves in the crowd at the square, close to the door of the antique, stamp, and coin shop, Knight and Sons. They pretend to be tourists, taking photos and admiring the historical fronts of the buildings in the square. Suddenly, when it gets close to the time, Peter approaches Detective Smith and whispers in her ear while pretending to take a selfie. I think I see them. Can you see those three guys? They're very covered up and I think I can see a ski mask in one of their pockets. Are you talking about the one wearing a red bracelet? Exactly. They are looking in the window of Knight and Sons. Warns Sergeant Brown. Sergeant, can you hear me? I hear you. We think we've identified them. Get ready for action. Look. 
They're putting on their ski masks and are about to go in. Hands in the air. Chapter 33. Two arrests. When the three thieves put on their ski masks and take out their weapons to rob Knight and Sons, Detective Smith takes out her weapon and arrests them. Immediately, the officers from the reinforcement unit approach them and get the three criminals to the ground. But, but how can that be? They shouldn't be here. Be quiet. Keep your mouth shut. Don't you see? They have given us away. They shouldn't be here. Shut your mouth. So, you were just taking a stroll in the square with ski masks and three semi-automatic weapons? We won't speak without a lawyer. Fine, no problem. Sergeant Brown, take them to the police station. Of course, detective. Chapter 34. Mr. Knight. After hearing the chaos at the door, the owner of the shop, Mr. Knight goes out to see what is happening and thank Detective Smith in person. Were these men going to come in and rob my shop? Yes, sir. Fortunately, we stopped them in time. Was there anything valuable? Of course. Many things, but it can't be a coincidence that they came in today to rob me. What do you mean by that, Mr. Knight? Today, we received one of the most valuable items we've had in the history of our shop. The British Guiana One Cent Magenta Stamp. What's that? What is it? It's one of three of the most valuable stamps in the world. One of a kind. The stamp collector who owned it died and his sons put it up for sale. It's going to be auctioned in our shop in one week. Just as a matter of interest Mr. Knight, how much is that stamp worth? Well, it'll start in the auction at five. Five thousand pounds for a stamp? Ha 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 ha, lady, you are very funny. Of course not. Five million. Chapter 35. The Return to the Station. After reassuring Mr. Knight that there will be a policeman outside to guard his shop until the auction, Laura and Peter go back to the police station. They talk about the case on the way. It seems like the painting was right. It's incredible. Do you think it will help prevent more crimes? Yes, I think so. But, there is a bigger mystery than that. Who painted it? Not exactly. I'm not really interested in who painted the picture, but in how they knew that the crimes would happen. Do you think that it could be a reformed criminal? A criminal who discovered his love of painting? Something like that is possible. It's definitely someone who has access to information. Nevertheless, it's someone choosing to give us the information. Otherwise, he wouldn't have hung it in a museum. And that's the biggest mystery of all. Why would they paint it? Chapter 36. The Interrogation Room. Detective Inspector Turner is questioning the robbers in the interrogation room at the police station. Officer Wilson is standing next to the door. Detective Smith and Peter approach in order to participate in the interrogation. Good day Officer Wilson. May we come in? Detective Inspector Turner has ordered that nobody be allowed to enter at the moment. That's odd. Oh, he's coming out now. Well guys, I couldn't get much out of them. We would like to ask the robbers some questions. I've already interrogated them, Smith, and they aren't talking. We don't even know their names. With all due respect boss, I would like to ask them some questions. Hmm, okay, Smith, but this is your last birthday favor. Understood boss. This'll only take five minutes, I promise. Chapter 37. The Interrogation. The thieves are sitting next to each other in the interrogation room. Peter goes in behind Detective Smith and closes the door. Shouldn't there be a mirror in this room to watch and listen to us from the other side? Be quiet. Why does everybody always ask the same question? It's not a Hollywood film. 
No one is listening to what we say. It's a normal room. Okay. Are you going to question us again? Listen, we have some questions here. Although, in reality, I don't really want to ask you this without letting you know something else. I suspect there is an informant, a whistleblower inside your group of friends. I knew it. Be quiet for once. We mustn't say a word. Didn't you get that? Who is the whistleblower? I'm not sure, but it could be anyone who likes to paint. Painting? Like someone who paints houses? No. Painting pictures. Art. Does that sound familiar to you? Chapter 38. Help. After leaving the interrogation room, Laura and Peter go back to Laura's office, where the painting is. Right. Well, mentioning the painting didn't cause a reaction in them at all. I doubt they have ever set foot in a museum in their lives. It looks like the picture wasn't done by someone in their group. We are very far from discovering the truth about the person who painted it. Anyway, we can worry about that after we are sure we have prevented all of the crimes that are shown in it. Okay, let's go back to the magnifying glass then. Yes, but it would be better if we had help. Are you finally going to tell Detective Inspector Turner about the painting? No, I think it's best if we leave him out of it, as he's being a bit odd today. I'm going to call Natalie, since she knows more about art than we do. Chapter 39. Turner knocks on the door. Laura and Peter, with Natalie's help, are trying to identify the places and times of the four other crimes shown in the mysterious painting. Natalie writes it all down in a notebook while they discover clues in different elements of the picture. Okay, so we have a strange parcel that will arrive at King's Cross train station at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. A robbery at a jewelry shop in the London borough of Chelsea at 5.30. And a drug deal in Brixton at 7 o'clock in the evening. And in terms of the fifth scene, I can't work out what is happening. These people here look worried, but they don't look like criminals. There is a house here with an open window, but you can't see anything inside. Knock, knock, good afternoon. Boss, how can we help you? I have a question. Wait, what are you doing? We are trying to figure out. We think there might have been a forgery. That's why Natalie is helping us analyze the picture. Okay, I wanted to know something. Did you manage to find out anything about the informant who warned you about the robbery at the stamp shop? No, yes. He called from a public telephone so it was impossible to find out more. Okay. Let me know if he calls back or you find out something else. Understood, boss. Chapter 40. The Fifth Crime When Turner leaves Detective Smith's office, Laura, Peter, and Natalie carry on trying to figure out the fifth crime that is shown in the picture. Well, we have an open window and a group of very worried people. One of them is crying. What is this car doing here? We can see the time on the dashboard. It says 2030. There is a person inside. How do you know there is only one person? Can't you see? There is only a driver in the car. There could be someone else, in the boot. Peter, you are right. Look, there is a teddy bear sticking out of the boot. That means... That it's a kidnapping. The open window of the house belongs to the child's bedroom, and the worried people are the neighbors and family, who have just found out she is missing. Drat, I have to make an urgent phone call. To whom? To Sarah, Jake's nanny. I won't be getting home until late today. Chapter 41. The Strategy Laura, Peter, and Natalie need to plan how to prevent the crimes in the picture. Okay, we need to speak to Turner. Do you agree? That way, we can get patrols set up at every location. You're actually going to think I'm crazy, 
but I don't think we should tell Turner about any of this. He's acting really strange. Also, the fewer people that know about the matter, the more likely the criminals won't find out about any of it. I don't think you're crazy. I actually agree with you. Okay, let's deal with it ourselves, the two of us. I can also help. Natalie, it could be dangerous. It was also dangerous when we put a stop to the thief of the William Turner paintings. That man had a weapon. Do you remember? Precisely. Are you sure you want to put yourself in danger? I will be fine. You will only have me close by in case you need help. Okay. The next two crimes are happening very soon. And they will both happen at similar times. So we need to split up. Natalie and I will go to the King's Cross train station to see if we can find the suspicious parcel that is due to arrive at 4 o'clock, while Peter will go to the jewelry shop for the robbery at 5 o'clock. Peter, try to get help from a local copper. And be careful. You too. Chapter 42. King's Cross. Laura and Natalie monitor the arrivals board at the immense and packed King's Cross train station waiting for the platform to be announced for the Cambridge train's arrival at 4.30. There it is, on the board. It says it will arrive on platform 11. It's the other side of the station. We need to run. Let's go. I'm going to speak to security so that they can search the luggage. We have to be quick. The train arrives in five minutes. Look, there is a security officer right there. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Detective Smith from the Central Police Station. Good afternoon, Detective. How can I help you? We have reason to believe that a package with illegal substances is on board this train arriving from Cambridge. Could we urgently put a search on the luggage? Of course. We don't normally take security measures on this train, but given the circumstances, I can get the whole team on it. Thanks a lot. 43. Luggage Search The security team at King's Cross train station perform a luggage search. When the train arrives from Cambridge, all of the passengers need to form a long queue and, one by one, show the contents of their luggage. They don't find anything strange until a woman with a red scarf over her head opens her bag. We have something here. It's a parcel with white powder in it. Let's have a look. What is this parcel? Madam, what is this? It's nothing, just sugar. Sugar? This isn't sugar, but it isn't drugs either. It has a label, but it's written in Chinese. Officer, does anyone in your team speak Chinese? No, but one of the shopkeepers in the train station is Chinese, my friend Alan. I'll go and get him immediately. Chapter 44. The Strange Substance The officer comes back a few moments later with Alan, his Chinese friend who works in one of the shops at King's Cross train station. The woman in the red scarf looks very nervous. Alan greets both Detective Smith and Natalie and reads the label of the suspicious package. He looks horrified when he reads it. I can't believe it. That's horrible. What does the label say? It says, Black Rhinoceros Horn. What? The species of rhino that became extinct a few months ago because they were being killed for their horns? Exactly. This is terrible. It must be worth a fortune. But the worst thing is that a rare animal died. Many practitioners of Chinese medicine think that it has healing properties. I think it's awful that they kill animals for this. I don't know anything. My friend gave it to me. And told me it was sugar. I was supposed to take it to a friend of hers here in London. Keep your story for our questioning. This is an illegal substance, and it is very probable that you will go to prison. Thank you for your help, Alan. No problem, detective. Chapter 45. The robbery at the jewelry shop. 
Laura and Natalie leave King's Cross to take the woman in the red scarf to the police station. On the way, they call Peter to find out more from him about the robbery at the police station. Peter. How's it going? Good. We recently handed over the thieves to the police squad to take to the station. However. What? What's happened? Well it took me a while to get the police squad to help me. In the beginning, they told me the jewelry shop wasn't on their beat today. Until I told them that it would be their fault if the jewelry shop got robbed. Then they started to be more helpful. Okay, that's strange. Do you know what? It'll be better not to take them to the central police station. Better to take them to the local police station. Is that okay? Understood. And then go straight to Brixton. We have to stop this drug deal. Chapter 46. The Drug Deal. Laura and Natalie are in Laura's car. They notice, from far away, that Peter is standing in a dark corner. I don't understand. What's he doing? He's not doing anything. Nothing? Exactly. In these cases, the best thing is to go to the location where you think drugs are being sold and stay there. Eventually, the drug dealer will approach you and offer you some drugs. Especially if you are a young man. They are the best market. That's terrible. Truly awful. Drugs are so bad for you. And the substances used to increase the volume of the drugs are very dangerous. Many young people die each day because of this. Look, someone is coming towards him. He's talking to Peter. Watch what Peter does when the man gives him his hand. He handcuffed him. He was so quick. Peter is the quickest in London with handcuffs. Stay here. I'm going to help him. Chapter 47. The Kidnapping. Laura, Peter, and Natalie have prevented four out of the five crimes shown in the mysterious painting that showed up at the Tate Museum. Just the last crime is left. They think it will be a kidnapping, at 8.30 at night, but they don't have the exact address. They could only work out that the address is in Knightsbridge. It's 8.25. I'm worried. Do you guys see anything? Nothing. Luckily, we'll notice the car straight away because cars aren't allowed around here. Is that a ladder? It is. What is that ladder doing against that house? Is the window open? Let's get out and ring the bell of the house. Okay, I'll come with you. Look, there is a car moving away quickly. Stay here. I'll follow it. Chapter 48. The Scream. The moment that Peter leaves to follow the car, a scream can be heard from inside the house that Laura and Natalie were going to ring the doorbell of. Seconds later, a woman appears at the open window. Then she comes down and opens the door. My child, my child, where is my child? Why is there a ladder against her window? Madam, we are the police. I'm Detective Smith. We stopped here because we saw the ladder. My colleague is chasing the car that was seen leaving. We have to wait. It's not possible, my child. Madam, sorry to ask you this. But is it possible she was kidnapped? Does your family have a lot of money or have enemies? Enemies, no, but I won't deny we have money. Also, lots of people are aware of my economic standing because my job is high profile. I'm the president of a tech company. Okay, madam. We will do everything possible to find your daughter. Here comes my colleague. Chapter 49. Peter's Return. Peter returns in his car. However, he is alone. Laura, we have to call the station. They have escaped. I followed them, but I didn't get the opportunity to see their faces. They were far away and driving very fast and I lost them. No, my child. I'm sorry, madam, but, I promise you, we will find your daughter. I was able to memorize the number plate, model, and color of the car. It was probably stolen, but it's a good start. Please, find my daughter. We will do. Natalie, stay with the lady. 
I'll go to the car to ask for backup. Chapter 50. At the station. After the backup team arrives at the woman's house, Laura, Peter, and Natalie return to the central station, as Turner has specifically asked them to do so. When Laura goes into her office, Turner is there, waiting for her. He seems very angry. A robbery in a jewelry shop? A suspicious package at King's Cross? A drug deal? A kidnapping? You have spent the whole day doing things without my knowledge. What's going on? I'm sorry sir. We received more information from the anonymous informant and we decided to act on it without telling anyone because we suspect someone in the station. We are sorry not to have told you. Look, Smith, I need to know who this informant is. We don't know. Really, sir. The informant is completely anonymous. You couldn't trace the calls? It obviously has to be a criminal, a mafia leader, or someone in a very dirty business, as they know all of the crimes in London. It's that. We haven't traced the calls. Because he didn't call. Chapter 51. The Unexpected Visit. As Turner and Laura are talking about the anonymous informant that has warned them about the crimes, someone arrives at Laura's office. Mummy. Son. What a lovely surprise. What are you doing here? Were you taking a walk with Nancy? Good evening, Laura. We are on our way back from the cinema and we happen to be very close to you. Jake asked if we could come in. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. In any case, I was getting ready to go home. It's past nine. What do you think about having dinner and going to bed, son? That would be great. You can go home, Nancy. I can take Jake from here. Okay, bye. Bye, Nancy. I love you. What's this picture, mummy? It's very pretty. Jake, you can look at it while I talk to my boss. Chapter 52. Turner Realizes. While Jake is having a look at the picture, Turner and Detective Smith finish their conversation about the day's cases. Okay, boss. How is the work going with the anti-kidnapping task force? They will work through the night, but I doubt they'll know any more about the kidnappers until the morning. I thought so. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. Don't think I've forgotten anything about the informant, Smith. I have appointments tomorrow morning, so I probably won't get here until midday, but then we can have a proper chat. Understood, boss. Mummy, it looks like one of my, where's Wally, books. Yes, exactly, son. I've already found all of the baddies. What, what do you mean by, all of the baddies, Jake? They are all wearing red handkerchiefs. It was this picture. Smith? Who painted this picture? I already told you, boss. It appeared at the Tate. We are trying to find out. Okay, I have to go. Let's talk tomorrow. Bye, boss. Chapter 53. The Red Handkerchiefs When Turner leaves, Laura carefully looks at the picture. After a while, she calls out to Peter and Natalie, who are in Peter's office. Jake has noticed something, haven't you, Jake? Hi, Jake. Hi, Peter. Yes, I noticed something. I'm a detective like you. Why don't you tell Peter and Natalie what you discovered while you were looking at the picture, son? I was looking at the picture that looks very like my, where's Wally? books, and I realized that there were lots of baddies. I found them very quickly because they are all wearing red handkerchiefs. Oh wow, that's true. How did we not realize that before? What does this mean? It could mean two things. Either the criminals are part of the same group or that somebody has given them the handkerchiefs as a form of identification to protect them. I don't understand. How does that work? It wouldn't be the first time. Generally, it has to do with corruption in the police force. 
A corrupt police officer offers protection to criminals in exchange for money. The identification, in this case a handkerchief, is so that the local coppers who are being paid don't shoot at or follow the criminals. Chapter 54. The Suspicious Person. Laura, Peter, Natalie, and Jake are in Laura's office, talking about the red handkerchiefs that identify the criminals in the painting. Hold on. Are you saying it's Turner? Unfortunately, yes. No, really? I would really like to not be certain about this, but he has been acting strange all day. Especially just now, when Jake said about the handkerchiefs. He was quite interested in finding out more about the informant before, but when he realized it was all in the painting, he just left without saying anything about the handkerchiefs, as if he already knows what they mean. Maybe he isn't corrupt. Maybe he's protecting a friend. Could be. Mummy, I'm tired. Let's go home, son. Peter, Natalie, go home. We will pick this up tomorrow. Okay, let us know if you find out anything else. Of course, you too. Chapter 55, The Good Night Laura takes her son, Jake, home. After preparing dinner, she gives him a bath and puts him to bed. Would you like one of your books? No thanks, mummy. I'm tired. I know son. It's been a long day for both of us. Mummy, can I ask you a question? Of course, anything. Is your boss bad? I don't know son. In any case, Remember everything you hear in Mummy's office is completely confidential. Do you know what the word confidential means? No. What does it mean? It means that it's a secret and that you can't tell anyone. Okay. But is he bad? I'll soon find out, son. But, now, sleep. Okay. Mummy, good night. I love you. I love you too, my son. Good night. Chapter 56. Adam calls again. After Jake falls asleep, Laura goes back to the living room where she sits down to have some tea. She gets a sudden telephone call that surprises her. Hello, who's speaking? Hi, Laura. It's me, Adam. Hi, Adam. Have you found out what happened today? Yes. I just spoke to Natalie, and she told me everything. What do you think about it? I think that the idea about police corruption makes sense. I also found out a few things. What do you know? Well, to start with, the red handkerchiefs have been seen by various witnesses in violent crimes over the last few years. We have looked over historical newspapers and most of those crimes, by chance, happened in places where there was normally a police presence, but for some reason, they weren't there when needed. So, you mean that something has been happening under our noses for a while? Yes. Only, this time someone has warned you. Chapter 57. Talking with Adam. Detective Smith speaks with Adam on the phone. The man, a member of a group of private investigators, is helping with the case because he is a friend of Natalie and Alice. I've been looking at archives in galleries and museums and I can't find anyone who paints like the artist who painted the mysterious paintings. It could be someone who hasn't shown any of his pictures to the world yet. Don't you think? It's possible. Anyway, the technique is very good. Definitely someone with artistic training. I'll bear that in mind. In any case, I'm currently more worried about who is protecting these criminals. And even more worried about that little girl. If only we had arrived a few minutes earlier. I'm sure it will be fine. We just have to keep working. Chapter 58. Steps to be taken. Laura and Adam carry on talking about the mystery of the painting, and about the next actions that must be taken to resolve the case. 
Additionally, Detective Smith makes a confession. Well, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what is your next move? I haven't told Peter and Natalie, as they would have tried to dissuade me, but tomorrow. I'm going to follow my boss. You are going to follow Chief Inspector Turner? Yes, he told me he has appointments tomorrow. I want to know where he is going. Laura, can I ask you a question? Of course. Why are you telling me all of this? Why do you trust me? Adam, I'm a detective. I've known about the Historians Club for ages. You know about us? Yes, and I know everything about you, Adam. The man with the hat. Chapter 59. Following Turner. The following day, Detective Smith parks near where her boss, Chief Inspector Turner, lives in order to follow him when he leaves his house. However, while she is waiting in her car, someone appears who she was not expecting. Detective Smith, is that you? Hi, James. You startled me. I wasn't expecting to see you. I live here in this house. Were you waiting for my dad? Um, yes, I was waiting to speak to him for a bit before going to the office. It sounds like something confidential, so I won't ask any more questions. Where are you off to so early? Are you going to the museum? No, I don't go to the museum until midday. I have a university class. My bus is coming. See you soon. Bye. Hope you have a good day. Chapter 60. The Building Under Construction. After James leaves, Detective Smith sees Chief Inspector Turner leaving his house. She follows him in her car until they arrive at a building under construction. She keeps at a safe distance, follows him, and enters the building, where she can hear him speaking to someone. She doesn't know who is involved, but I think she is close. Someone is giving her information. It's none of us. It has to be someone in your department. Of course not. I trust all of my men. It's someone who has painted a picture. What about him? He can be trusted. How come we have never seen him around here? Because he's just joined us, but you can trust him. Okay, let's talk business. Here are the handkerchiefs. Don't forget to wear them in a visible place. I'll make sure that the area is free at 3.30 p.m. on the 8th of October. Perfect. What's that noise? Is someone there? Chapter 61. The Escape. Detective Smith tries to slip away from the building before anyone sees her, but the crooks and corrupt coppers hear something. She thinks she can manage to escape by an emergency staircase. But the door is locked. The criminals get closer. Detective Smith gets out through a window. She doesn't have anywhere to go. Where are they? You, go and see if you can find them outside. Did you see who it was? I didn't see. You? Me neither. They can't be very far. There is no way of getting out of here. Well then, that should make it easier to find them. Everything is over if this person hurt us. So, you'd better find them. And, if you do, I hope you know what to do. Chapter 62. The Getaway. Laura is trapped outside a window where Chief Inspector Turner and the crooks can't see her. She's on the third floor, so she has no way of jumping down to the street without hurting herself. Just when it seems like they are about to find her, she hears someone calling her from below. Laura. Peter, what are you doing down there? I'll explain later. Look, I'm going to try to get up the scaffolding to where you are. Which scaffolding? This one. It has a few cans of paint, so I'm sure the painters must have used it. Someone is opening the window. Climb, quickly. Look, someone is escaping on the scaffolding. Boss, shall we shoot? Let her go. She will never have enough evidence to incriminate me. Chapter 63. Escaping. 
Laura quickly drops from the scaffolding when she is less than a meter from the ground. She escapes along with Peter as far as her car, which is parked around the corner. Do you think they saw you? They definitely didn't see my face. But, it's possible that Turner recognized me. Wait, what were you doing there? I was following Turner, like you. I had a feeling you were going to do something like this. That's why I followed you today. Okay, well, next time let me know. You can come with me. In any case, thanks. What did you manage to find out? Lots of things. Lots of terrible things. Chapter 64. In the car. On the way to the police station, Laura tells Peter what she heard at the building site. I can't believe our boss is corrupt. So, he's the one giving the red handkerchiefs to the criminals. Exactly. It's a way of showing that they have paid for police protection. So that when the police see them, they know not to arrest, stop, or shoot at them. How have we never heard of this before? Turner knows we aren't corrupt. He would never have risked getting us involved in any of this. Do you have any idea which other copper was with him? No, he didn't speak, and I couldn't get a look at his face. It could be anyone. What do we do now? Now we have to get together enough evidence to charge him. Chapter 65. The Secret in the Painting. When they arrive at the police station, Detective Smith and Peter run to her office. Laura looks at the painting. What are you looking for? I'm sure there is something else here that we haven't noticed. What do you think it is? I don't know. A clue. A detail. Someone we haven't yet seen. What do you hope to find? Turner receiving a bribe in the middle of the picture? Well that wouldn't be a bad thing. Is that him? Yes. He isn't receiving a bribe. He's just standing. Looking at everything. Do you see anything strange about his clothes? As if he has something in his pocket? He stands out differently from the rest of the people. Do you think there could be something under the painting? Let's see. I need a metal detector. Chapter 66. The Memory Card. When Peter returns with a metal detector, Detective Smith passes it slowly over the surface of the picture. Precisely when she runs it over the person who looks like Turner, the detector makes a light, peep, sound. There's no doubt there is something here. Do you have a knife? Of course. I have my penknife. Lend it to me a moment. Sure. Here. Now slowly. I'm going to try to take out whatever is in here. Careful. You could break it. Got it. What is it? It's a memory card. And I bet you 50 quid that all of the evidence we need is on it. Chapter 67. The Files. Detective Smith has just found a memory card hidden under the picture from the Tate. She quickly puts it into a reader and opens her computer. There are dozens of files. What are they? They appear to be audio files. Let's listen to one. My team will clear the area a bit before 2.30 so that you can get on with your work freely. Don't forget that it's a tourist area. I don't want anyone harmed. Understood, boss. We'll only get the stamp and we'll leave as quickly as possible. There won't be any problems. They seem to be talking about the robbery at the antique shop. Yes, they are. The file is called 1209 to 1430. 1209. That's the robbery date. And 1430 is the time. There are others with the same date. Which must be the other crimes. But look, there are many more. We have proof of many other crimes which involve the police. We are going to have to listen to them all. Chapter 68. Who are the kidnappers? Detective Smith is getting ready to listen to the audio files that she has found on the memory card. However, Peter stops her. He seems very worried. Wait. 
Before listening to all of this, don't you think we should focus on the kidnapping? Who knows where the girl is? Of course, you are so right. Look, this must be the file. It has the correct date and time. Okay, let's listen to what's on it. Sure. Okay, it needs to be at exactly 8.30. You know it's hard for me to be on time. Donnie, this is serious. I can only give you a five-minute window. Okay, okay. It will be at 8.30, don't worry. Did you hear that? What? He said, Donnie. Chapter 69, Donnie. Laura and Peter are listening to the audio file which has Chief Inspector Turner negotiating with the kidnappers who are going to take the girl in Knightsbridge. Laura has heard something on the recording that has caught her attention, so they play it again. Yes, he says, Donnie. Who is Donnie? You are very young. There was a case about 15 years ago. Donald Johnson, known by everyone as, Donnie. He was one of those crooks who love variety. Variety? Yes, he and his sidekicks would commit the most random crimes. Illegal gambling, drugs, smuggling, extortion, and finally, kidnapping. One time he was paid to kidnap the girlfriend of an important politician, and when he realized how much money he could make from kidnapping, he started to do it more and more. And he was never caught? Yes, of course he went to prison. I think he was sentenced to about 20 years in the slammer. He must have been let out on good behavior because he's out early. Chapter 70. The Safe. Laura and Peter have discovered who the kidnapper is, an ex-convict who used to be heavily involved in kidnappings. And do you know where we can find Donnie right now? I have a pretty good idea about where he could be. His old stomping ground? No, his mum's house. I interviewed this woman dozens of times and she never told us anything. I'm sure she is currently protecting him. Wait, what should we do with the memory card? You're not going to leave it here, are you? No, of course not. But what do we do with it? Should we take it with us? I have a better idea. I have a small safe in my office where I keep the contact information of some undercover coppers. No one knows the passcode except me. Shall we put it in there while we are out? Yes, sure. Here, guard it well. Shall I see you at the car in five minutes? Yes, perfect. I'll see you downstairs. Chapter 71. The Kidnapper's Hideout. Five minutes later, Peter and Laura meet up in the car park. They get into Detective Smith's car and leave for where they think they can find Donnie. It's a little flat on the outskirts of the city. They knock on the door until someone answers. Who is it? I was taking a nap. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. My name is Laura Smith. Detective Laura Smith. We met about 15 years ago. Is your son at home? My son isn't home at the moment. He's gone out. Come back another day. Please, madam, open the door. Okay, okay, come in. But my son isn't at home. Is anyone else here? No, I'm alone. My son is working. He has a proper job in a supermarket now. He has left his past behind him. I don't know why you are here. Madam, we won't bother you for long. We just want to ask you something. Do you always watch cartoons while you are sleeping? Oh no. Chapter 72. The Rescue. From the door, cartoons can be seen playing on the TV. There is a glass of milk and some biscuits on the table. Laura goes into the flat and looks in all of the rooms. In one of the bedrooms, she finds a girl hiding. It's my niece. We were playing hide and seek. Didn't you just say you were alone and having a nap? I forgot that my niece was in the flat. Poor thing, she must have been hiding for more than an hour. Don't be scared, little one. I'm a police officer. And I'm also a mummy. 
My son, Jake, is about your age. How old are you? I'm six. My son is only five. I bet you could be friends. Your name is Sophie, right? Yes. How did you know? Because your mother sent me to get you. Shall we go to her? Will anyone hurt my mummy if I go? No, darling, of course not. Don't cry. Everything will be okay. Chapter 73 The Return Home Peter arrests Mrs. Johnson, who still won't say where her son is. She says that she did the kidnapping all by herself. Meanwhile, Laura Smith takes little Sophie to be with her mother. My daughter, is it you? Mummy, mummy, it's me, it's me. Come here, child, and hug me. Thank you, thank you, detective. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you brought me my little girl back. Only doing my job, madam. What has happened to the men who did this? Have you caught them? We have made an arrest. However, there are still other people involved that we need to catch. In the meantime, there will be police protection. Do you see those women in that car? Yes, I do. They are also police officers. I trust them completely. They will be watching your house day and night. Please do not open the door to anyone you don't know and don't go out. If you need to go somewhere, please speak to them. Understood. Can't you stay too? I'm sorry, but I have to go and catch the men who did this. Chapter 74. Where is the card? Detective Smith goes back to the station, ready to report Chief Inspector Turner with the support of the evidence from the memory card that they found in the picture. However, when she gets there, Peter has some news. The memory card. It's gone. What? How is that possible? Didn't you say that you were the only one who knew the code? Yes. I don't understand how this has happened. Where could it be? I've looked everywhere for it, and it's nowhere. Somebody must have taken it. Turner has to be behind this. Shish. Someone is coming. Chapter 75. Turner calls. While Laura and Peter are talking in the corridor of the station, Officer Wilson, one of the men closest to Turner, approaches them. Smith. Thompson. What's up, Officer Wilson? Turner wants to see you in his office straight away. Of course. We'll be there in a second. I have orders to go with you. Okay, let's go, Peter. Better not to put it off. Sure. Be careful. This could get violent. Have your hand weapon ready. Understood, mate. Come in and shut the door behind you. We would prefer to leave the door open. Peter, shut the door. Yes, boss. Peter, what are you doing? It's over Laura. Chapter 76. An Unexpected Turn. Laura and Peter are in Turner's office. Laura has just realized that Peter has been complicit in Turner's corrupt schemes. She is extremely surprised. Are you also a part of this? The whole time? No, no. Detective Thompson is one of the latest additions to the team. I think that it's thanks to you, Detective Smith, that Peter got involved in our schemes. As soon as he realized how things were around here, he came to ask to join our team. Is that true? Yes, it is. And the memory card? I don't even have a safe in my office. And when the girl was kidnapped, and you followed the criminal? I let him escape. And when I found you at the building under construction? Well, I technically found you there. You were the copper with Turner making deals with those crooks. Chapter 77. The Reasons. After hearing that her colleague is as corrupt as her boss, Laura expects an explanation. She can't believe that he has decided to make this terrible decision. But why, Pete? Why? I thought you were different. 
You really want me to believe you have never thought about it? That you've never been tempted to get a bit more out of the system? I want a better life. I want to live with dignity. We all want to live better, Peter. But I can tell you right now that you won't find any dignity this way. Why do you think this will make your life better? You're asking me why I'm looking for extra income when I risk my life every day and earn the same as a waiter? We all work under those conditions, you must know that. And end up like you, 40 years old, living in a horrible flat, with a second-hand car and hardly managing to support your son? Chapter 78 The Weapon Turner, who has remained quiet for a while, gets something out of his belt. It's a weapon. Laura stays completely still. Inspector, what are you going to do with that? One moment, boss. Isn't that a bit extreme? Everyone in the station will hear it. Quiet. You both need to be quiet for a second. You, Peter, don't waste your energy finding excuses. The unfair system, dignity. We are all the same at the beginning, but the sooner you accept it, the better. You're doing it for the cash, and because you like going out with your girlfriend. You like to get it quickly and easily, although it means taking from someone else. But I. And you, Smith. You think you're better than everyone, with your impeccable morals? Bad news, you aren't. After all of this, you will never get a promotion in your life. You will have the same wage for the next 20 years and then retire. Your son won't be living at home by then, you will be poor and alone, and no one close to you will know about all the good things you did when you were a copper. Is that what you want? But. Silence. Now I'm going to do what I should have done a while ago. Chapter 79. Destroyed Evidence. At this moment, Chief Inspector Turner takes the memory card out of his pocket. He puts it on his desk and, with the butt of his gun, hits it until it breaks into little pieces. No. Yes. Now there is no more proof of what happened. You can go and speak to whoever you like but. But I don't think it'll do you any good. What are you trying to say? Are you not at all interested where Donnie was this afternoon, when you went to arrest his mother? What are you talking about? After all, he is very experienced at, picking up, little children. Where is little Jake at the moment? What? Boss, wait, we didn't talk about this. Chapter 80. The Kidnapping. Turner has implied that Laura's son could be in danger if she doesn't help out. You are telling me that Donnie has gone after my son? He is closely following him. Oh look, he sent me a message. At the moment, he is in the park with his nanny. One wrong move, Smith, and your son will be in the clutches of my colleague. No, no, I beg you. Please tell him not to lay a hand on him. We'll see. First, we need to resolve this mess you've created. For example, we need to let Mrs. Johnson go. Donnie got very angry when he heard you had brought her in. Don't worry boss, I didn't bring her in on kidnapping charges. Only as a witness. She's in one of the interrogation rooms. Okay, let's go and talk to her and send her home. And you, Smith, you stay here for a bit. I'm taking your mobile, if you don't mind, and the landline phone. Don't try to leave. Officer Wilson will be at the door. Chapter 81. Trapped in the office. Laura finds herself trapped in Turner's office. The door is locked, and Officer Wilson is on the other side of the door making sure she doesn't leave. Laura tries to talk to him so that she can get out. Wilson, listen to me. If you let me out and admit everything, it's possible you will get less jail time. Be quiet. I'm not letting you out of here. Also, you are the only one around here who will go to prison. So, Turner is planning to frame me? I don't believe it. Nobody will believe him. You really think that the chief constable will believe you over him? I wouldn't be so sure. Turner has been here a lot longer than you. 
He knows more people and has more power. He has more power, but he doesn't have any evidence against me. He doesn't have anything on me. One way or another he will manage, don't you worry. Now be quiet, you don't want your son to get hurt. Someone is coming. Chapter 82 Wilson Leaves Laura hears footsteps approaching in the corridor. Someone she doesn't know is talking to Wilson. What's going on? Tuner sent me to come and get you. But not long ago, he told me to stay here and not to move. Yes, he told me you'd say that, but it's urgent. We have to go to New Scotland Yard immediately. Did he tell you why? No, he told me he couldn't say over the phone. Okay, let's go. You, Smith, don't even think of leaving here. Remember what's at stake. Okay, okay. Chapter 83 Escaping Detective Smith waits a bit for Officer Wilson and the other officer to walk away. Then, without giving it a second thought, she opens the door slightly. Making sure nobody sees her, she leaves the building. However, just as she gets out onto the street, she bumps into Natalie, what are you doing here? It's urgent. A messenger arrived not long ago with this envelope for me. It says, this is for Laura. Tell her, this time, not to tell anyone. How odd. What's inside? I don't know. I haven't looked. Open it. It's the memory card. But, how is that possible? Turner destroyed it. But it's the same card from the picture. It has paint on top of it. Laura, sorry, but I have no idea what you are talking about. No worries. I'll tell you on the way. Where are we going? To save my son. And then to catch this corrupt man, Turner. Chapter 84 On the way to the park Laura rushes to her car with Natalie. When they get in, Laura puts on the sirens and pulls out at top speed towards Hyde Park, the enormous London park where Jake is with his nanny. This card has evidence of Turner's corruption. It was hidden in the painting, in the picture. So, you were right all along. Turner was involved in all of the crimes shown in the painting. Yes, in those and many more. And now, he's threatened to kidnap my son. No, that's awful. Where is Jake? Up until a while ago, he was in the park with his nanny. Turner took my telephone, so I can't call her. Maybe we can reach them before Turner's accomplice does. And then? How are we going to get him arrested? We need to go to New Scotland Yard with this evidence and speak to Chief Constable Sims. He is the person we need to appeal to in order to arrest Turner. Chapter 85 Someone Has Taken Jake After a few minutes of driving at top speed through London streets, Laura and Natalie arrive at Hyde Park. They go straight to where Jake normally hangs out with his nanny. After looking for a while, they find Jake's nanny, Nancy, walking alone. Nancy, where is Jake? Hi, Laura. Don't worry, Jake's fine. Where is he? Peter came to get him a while ago, like you told me. When did I tell you that? You sent me a message from your mobile, to tell me that Peter was coming to get Jake. Don't you remember? Peter came by a few minutes ago to collect him. Is there a problem? No, no problem. It's true, I forgot. Where is my head these days? I really need a holiday. Okay, Nancy. I'm going home. See you later. Chapter 86 Peter's Call Laura goes back to her car with Natalie, not knowing what's going to happen next. Okay, so everything's okay. Jake is with Peter. Natalie, there's something I haven't told you. What is it? Peter. Peter is working with Turner. He's one of them. He let money get the better of him. No way. Wait. That means that, Jake. 
Yes, exactly. Look, it's him, Peter. He's calling me. What should we do? Give me the telephone. I want to speak to him. Hello? Laura, don't worry. Where's my son? Calm down, calm down. Really, we're at your house. All is okay. Come here and I'll explain everything. Chapter 87. The Reunion with Jake. Laura and Natalie drive as fast as possible to Laura's flat. Jake runs into his mother's arms and gives her a big hug when they open the door. Peter is sitting on a chair in the kitchen, waiting. My boy. Mummy, how are you? How are you son? Are you okay? You're not hurt? What are you talking about mummy? Laura, we need to talk. Yes, we do need to talk. Jake, please go and play in your room for a bit. The adults need to talk. Okay, I was going to go there, anyway. Laura, I was never with Turner. It was all an undercover investigation. I sent the memory card to Natalie, and I gave a fake one to Turner. An investigation? Now I understand. It seemed impossible. Chapter 88 Peter explains everything. Laura, Peter, and Natalie are talking in Laura's flat. Peter is explaining that he was working as an undercover agent, infiltrating the group of corrupt policemen led by Turner. I'm sorry, but I couldn't tell you before. It was completely secret. So, why didn't you keep the card at the police station? This card contains very important evidence against Turner. I had to get the evidence out of the police station. I couldn't have it with me, as Turner is currently very paranoid. Since the painting, he knows that someone from his team is giving information, but he has no idea who it is. So, every so often he checks our pockets and looks to see if we are wearing mics. Do you know who is passing us the information? Who painted the picture? No idea. No one knows. Chapter 89 the Corruption Network. Peter explains to Laura that, as well as including Turner, the network of corruption that he's investigating is much bigger than he thought. But once we had evidence, on the memory card, why wasn't Turner reported then? You will see, it isn't just Turner. We want to arrest all of the corrupt police that work with him. I needed a bit longer to gather evidence against the others involved, but now I have everything I need. And the matter with Jake? When we left, Turner was going to call Donnie to get him to kidnap Jake, but I managed to convince him that it would be better if I did it. I told him that I already knew Jake and his nanny and that it would be easier. It was tricky, but I managed to convince him. In that way, I was able to make sure Jake was safe. Afterwards, I called one of the other men and pretended to be Turner, and told him to get Wilson urgently. That's how you were able to escape. Buddy, you saved my son. Chapter 90. The Promise. Laura hugs Peter, as she is grateful for all he has done for her and her son. Right. Now we have to report this crook. Before he tries to blame me. Laura, would you like me to stay with Jake? Yes, please. Jake. Come and say bye to mummy. You are going to stay with Auntie Natalie. Okay? okay? Oh mummy, always working. I promise you that, if all goes well today, I'll take a whole month off to play with you. What do you think? Amazing. Chapter 91. The Central Office. Peter and Laura drive to the Central Office at New Scotland Yard, where they look for Chief Constable Sims. However, once they go through security and enter the building, they notice something strange. What's going on here? It's very empty, no? Yes, very strange. When I came here yesterday to drop off X-ray, it was full of people. Where could everyone be? Quiet, I hear something. Hello, is anyone there? Hands in the air, put your weapons down. You are under arrest. 
What? Hands above your head or we will shoot. Chapter 92. Arrested. A dozen police officers with police dogs come out of their hiding places in the central office of New Scotland Yard. They are armed. Peter and Laura raise their arms. The police handcuff Peter and Laura. What's happening? We came here to see Chief Constable Sims. Don't worry, Detective Smith. I'm here. I told him you'd be coming. Chief Constable, they had a plan to blame me for their own corrupt actions. But, Turner, what are you saying? I've just played the Chief Constable a recording where your voice can be heard, Peter, selling protection to criminals, presumably under the orders of Detective Smith. And when you realized your game was up, you come here to blame others. I was working undercover, to investigate you. Oh okay, and where is your evidence? The evidence is in my pocket. Come on, check my pockets. Officers, check Detective Smith's pockets. Chapter 93. The Memory Card. Two policemen approach and check Laura's pockets. After a few seconds, one of them takes out a small memory card stained in red paint. Do you see this, Chief Constable? This memory card has dozens of recordings of Chief Inspector Turner negotiating with the gangs and criminals. That isn't possible. No way. They don't have anything against me. Why so worried, Turner? You thought you had destroyed all of the evidence, no? This is the actual memory card. The one you destroyed in your office was the one with photos from my holiday in Greece last summer. Of course, my girlfriend is going to kill me when she finds out we have lost all those photos. I'm going to kill you, Smith. You have tricked me. Chapter 94 Body to the Ground Turner, who is completely furious, takes out a gun and points it at Peter and Laura. When Chief Constable Sims tries to arrest him, Turner points the gun at his head. All the policemen lower their weapons. Everyone to the ground. All of you, throw down your weapons away from you. What are doing Turner? Are you crazy? Give yourself in now and don't make things worse for you than they already are. Silence. Everyone to the ground. You, too, or I'll blow your head off. Peter, what shall we do? I have a plan. Ready. What are you doing? Silence. Now I'm going to slowly leave here, and I don't want anyone following me. Everyone stay on the ground and count to 100. We have to do something. He's about to escape. X-Ray, attack. Chapter 95, X-Ray's attack. When Peter gives the order, X-Ray, who has been in the room the whole time, jumps up and bites Turner's hand. Turner tries to lift it up high, but X-Ray doesn't let go. After a few moments of wrestling, Turner drops the gun. At this moment, all of the policemen get up and grab their guns and point them at Turner. Halt. Turner. X-Ray. You saved me. Well, Thompson, it was you really. No, no, it was X-Ray. I only gave the order. He's very brave, aren't you, boy? Who's my brave doggy? Chief Constable. I don't think it's necessary to explain that Turner is the head of the network of corruption and we had nothing to do with it. Of course. There will obviously be an investigation, but after everything I've just seen, there is no doubt that Turner is to blame. Would you mind, then, taking off our handcuffs? Chapter 96. Turner is arrested. A group of policemen handcuff Turner and, at the same time, uncuff Laura and Peter. What are you doing? We are arresting you, Turner. After all of this, there's no doubt that you will spend the rest of your life in prison. And not just for all of the corruption, but for what you've just done. Take him away. Wait, wait, Smith, can you tell me who was? Who was the informant? It wasn't Peter, he didn't have all of that information. Who is it? I guess you will have to keep wondering, Turner. 
it will give you something to think about in jail. No. Tell me. Take him away now. Right. Now that he's gone. Who was the informant Turner is talking about? Chief Constable. We really have no idea. We only know that he likes to paint. Chapter 97. An urgent call from Natalie. At that moment, Peter's phone rings. It's Natalie. Let me talk to her. Natalie, is everything okay? No, it's not okay. Nothing is okay, Laura. What's happened? Is Jake okay? Yes, he's here with me in the cab. Hi, Mummy. We're going to the hospital. To the hospital? Natalie, what's happened? An accident? No, no. It's Alice. She's in labor. Oh, calm down Natalie. Everything is going to be fine. We'll see you at the hospital. Deep breaths. Deep Chapter 98. The Offer. When Laura gets off the phone, Chief Constable Sims approaches her. Is everything okay, Smith? Yes, Chief Constable. It's my friend. She's about to become a mother. Oh, of course. Go to her. But before that, I wanted to ask you something. Of course, go ahead. Smith, what are your plans for the future? What do you mean? Well, we need a new chief inspector to take Turner's place. I think that someone like you with an excellent track record and outstanding morals would be perfect. Oh, wow. Well, I would love to. But under one condition. Sure. What is it? I need a month's holiday to spend with my son. Ha ha. Of course, Smith. Family first. When you've finished, the chief inspector job will be waiting for you. Chapter 99. At the Tate. A few weeks later, Laura makes a visit with Jake to the Tate. The mysterious picture showing the crimes is, once again, hanging on the wall there. Natalie and Alice meet them there, with their newborn baby. Oh, she's beautiful. She's already so big. Look how big the baby is already. Jake, have you decided on a name? Yes, Laura. Oh, are you sure? It's such an honor. The baby has the same name as you, Mummy. I think it's a lovely name. Thanks, Jake. Any news on the painting? We don't know anything new. But the director loved the idea of hanging it here. This time, we got a ticket printed for it. Oh really? What does the ticket say? It says, Painter Unknown, Oil on Canvas and Memory Card. This picture helped solve five crimes in one day and dismantle a corrupt police network. We really think that there will be huge interest, once the story comes out in the papers tomorrow. Look who's here. It's Adam. Chapter 100. Adam's Visit. Adam, who is dressed in a hat and a long overcoat, approaches the group. After greeting them all, he takes Laura to the side to talk to alone. Hi, Adam. It's great to meet you in person. I wanted to thank you for your help. Well, I haven't really done much to help out with this mystery. Until now. What do you mean? Well, it's been difficult, but we've discovered who painted the picture. Who was it? Look, there he is, looking at his own work of art. That's James Turner. You mean to say he was incriminating his own father? Yes. And after everything, wouldn't you do the same? Do you think we should say something? I really think it would be better for him and his family if we left things as they are. Last chapter. James receives an invitation. When James sees Detective Smith, he approaches her. He looks sad, but well. How are you, James? I'm sorry about your father. It's okay. Detective. I guess he deserved it. Have you been to see him in prison? My father and I never really had a good relationship. 
I understand. James, this is Adam. I think you would both get on well. Adam also loves art. Hi Adam. So, you really like art? I like to paint. Yes, I know. You know? Yes, I'm actually part of a secret and special club made up of people who love art, and we know lots about you. We were thinking about inviting you to join us, if you would like to.